Hey, everybody. Hi, thanks for having me. Did you guys have a good lunch? Yeah, me too. I'm telling you, I want to work here because that lunch was awesome. Um, I don't make anything near that. Anyways, my name is Matthew Reinhardt, and I make pop-up books. Um, some people call me a paper engineer. Some people call me um, a children's book illustrator. I'm, I, I like to think of myself as all those things and many more. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about you know, how I do what I do. I'm also going to um, make a pop-up of here and show you some things um, that you can actually make at home too. Um, so let's get started. Say hello. See, I always have to put notes for myself in these presentations. It helps me a lot. Um, when I'm doing that, to say hello and get started. So we got that done. All right, very good. All right, so um, when I was young, I had no idea that there was such a thing as a paper engineer or a pop-up book maker or whatever. I was just a kid. I liked to ride bikes. You know, my fashion sense was a little off, um, but but I, but I didn't know. And you know, you guys are really lucky. Everyone's really lucky to be able to come here and you know be with, with your parents and uh, see what they do at work. It's really important. As you get older, you get to you, you, you get to learn about what things work and what things you, you, for you and what things you might like to do as a job and other things you may not like to do. So, uh, like growing up, like you know, my parents did different things, and you know, I'd go to work with them. Here is uh, my mother was an aerobic instructor. There I am in the background, if you can see, <laughs> really. Uh, and uh, yes, it was the 80s. You know, okay, uh, it's not my fault. All right, uh, my dad was a dentist. Here I am at the dentist um, helping my dad. <laughs> he only let me use that drill once, though. I don't, I, yeah, but anyways, I look good in, scr in scrubs. But um, seriously, though, um, tell a little bit about myself. OK, so enough of the jokes. Uh, OK, so I have always sort of, uh, growing up, I, I, my dad was in the Navy. We lived all over the place. Um, the one thing that I always took with me was uh, artwork. So I always drew, I always made stuff. You know, there, there I am in that corner there when I was really young writing my first book. Um, it was a novel. It took me forever, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, I was always making things. I was just drawing and I was and, 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 uh, creating things with my hands. Uh, because that was, the, that was what could come with me. If I didn't have friends in a new space or, you know, if I, it was, uh, we had moved, my artwork always came with me. So I spent a lot of time by myself making things. And when, when I was young, you know, there were no Michaels stores. So um, you know, getting supplies to make this stuff wasn't, wasn't always as easy. So I was always rummaging through the garbage or you know, anything extra, making things out of boxes, cereal boxes, um, um, styrofoam from um, any sort of uh, electronic that we ever got. I was always you know, buying or grabbing the boxes and making stuff out of it. If there was a toy that I that didn't exist, I would make it myself out of whatever I could. Um, right there, you see a picture of me with my little sister. Um, I think I made a little uh, cardboard puppetry stage. And as usual, my sister would destroy it. You know, within a few seconds, she would come over, oh, this is great, Rip. You know, so that was kind of um, what it was like. Uh, this is a drawing I did, I think, back in first grade. And I've always had an interest in biology and zoology and uh, paleontology. I love dinosaurs. I love, you know, but I really just loved making artwork and kind of telling stories with pictures. Um, as you can see, also, I was a little bit of an egomaniac. My name is really big <laughs> up in the corner, and I think that's kind of translated into, you know, myself now. Um, but uh, so uh, it was a, it, but being an artist really wasn't a viable option, at least when I was younger, uh, for a career. I, at, at the time, we didn't have the Google. And we couldn't go online and figure out, you know, do our research so easily. You know, we had to go to those things called libraries and things. And we would go. And uh, I didn't know as much about all the creative jobs that are out there, all the ways that you can sort of channel that creative energy and that, that talent. Um, and so when I went off from uh, high school, uh, I didn't have a lot of motivation I mean, really, I, I, uh, to, to, to find out what I could do. My parents didn't want me to be a starving artist. They used that a lot, all the time. We don't want you to be a starving artist, you know. Um, and uh, so I went to school for my uh, college years, and I studied uh, biology. My, my, uh, I actually, uh, ha my undergraduate degree is in biological sciences. And I was going to be uh, a doctor. I uh, studied pre-med. 
Uh, I went to Clemson University for my undergraduate degree. Um, as you can see me, I think I'm up in the corner there um, somewhere. Anyway, so I went to Clemson. The entire time I was there, though, while I was studying all these biology and chemistry and biochemistry, which is horrible, if you've ever, you know, biochemistry is the worst. Um, after, I, when I was studying all these different things, I, I felt something like, I, I felt like it wasn't quite right. I mean, I was interested in it, and I was pretty good at it, and actually I got into medical school, but, but I just, it wasn't right. So the whole time I was doing all this science, I was also doing artwork on the side. I was always doing sketches. I was always making these giant paintings of weird things. Um, and I wanted to see if I, there was a way I could apply that and some of my science skill uh, to a job, but I just didn't know at the time. So before I went to med school, like I said, I got in. Before I went to school to be a doctor, which is a long haul, you know, it's, you, you, there's a lot that goes into it. My parents were really pushing for it. Um, I told them, listen, I, need a, I, I want a year off before I go to school, and I want to live in New York City. And, um, oop, that one went before it. this one. Let's see. Well, so I lived in New York City. That's, that's the apartment that we lived in down in, um, on Canal Street, actually. We had rats like this big, I swear to God. Um, it, was, it was a really cool space that we lived in, but he actually, we lived over a stereo store. So, like, from noon till about 7 at night, the, the, the vibrations from the stereos downstairs would move our furniture so that everything would shake. Um, and during that time when I lived in New York City, I worked for uh, an organization that helped find corneas for people who have trouble with their eyes. And I worked with a lot of hospitals. So I was getting an idea of what it was, it was like to work with sick people. And I realized I didn't like working with sick people. I didn't know it was a good idea for me to work as a doctor if I didn't like doing that. It was really hard. And it was really scary. And so while I was here, you know, I came to that realization. And I also, New York is a really exciting, creative place. I mean, there's all kinds of people doing all kinds of weird jobs, things that you would never know existed. And while I was here, while I was in New York at that time, and this was about 25 years ago, um, back back when you know the Times Square was not filled with, you know, lots of Disneyland-like lights and everything. It was a lot different. I'm not going to go into that. Um, but uh, I also was meeting a lot of people who were doing a lot of different kinds of jobs and a lot of different kinds of creative jobs. And so I ended up going to my parents and saying, "Listen, this is not something I want to do. I don't want to be a doctor. You know." I really want to do something creative. And shockingly, they told me, OK, you can do that. But you have to find something where you'll be able to live, because we ain't paying for you forever. And so I did my research, and I, I, I discovered that there was something called industrial design. And that is the design of products, all kinds of products, whether they be tables or scissors or you know, like cool Nike shoes or even toys you know, that you get, like action figures. I'm a big action figure collector, actually. Um, I have a huge Star Wars figure collection, like 2,000 different Star Wars figures. And um, I've been collecting since 78, so I have a lot. And I also collect Transformers. And you'll see a little bit of that trickle into the work I do. Um, I have a huge Transformer collection. Now, here in New York City, we don't have a lot of space. So I can't have like a Transformers room in my apartment. I have a Transformer closet. But um, thank goodness for off-site storage, because that's where the rest of my collection goes. Anyways, I studied industrial design at, let's see if that picture comes up, Pratt Institute, um, which is in Brooklyn. And I, 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 took a grad, I, I did the graduate program at Pratt Institute, studied there for a couple years. And while I was there, I, um, let's see if that other picture comes up. There it is. It's New York. Well, I already told you I was in New York. Um, while I was there, I worked with a gentleman who uh, he needed some help making pop-ups. And I was his intern. And I just needed like an extra job to make some money. You know, it was OK. You know, I could cut up and fold paper, whatever. You know, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't really even think about pop-ups. In fact, growing up, I only had one pop-up book. And this was it. Um, this, it's, it's dinosaurs, obviously. And it was beautiful illustration. And when you open it up, there's a pop-up. And it's a little different than, you know, from some of the ones that I do. You know, I do kind of a little bit more elaborate ones like this. But we'll get, get in there. Um, but I really loved it. Now, this pop-up ended up, after it was in my household for a little while, um, probably about an hour or so, it looked like, like this. <laughs> because of one person. 
uh, in the house. So I really didn't think about pop-ups. It was never in my mind or anything like that. <laughs> That's really, yeah, yeah. Uh, so pop-ups weren't in my mind, but I would help. I, 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 when I was younger and when I was in um, grad school, I was helping this paper engineer. And, you know, I would cut in full paper and follow his instructions. And, you know, it was a long time. I worked for him a couple years uh, just doing this. And, and, and when I got out of school, I realized that maybe this is, a, maybe this is something I can do. And so there was a lot. So, so for quite a few years, I apprenticed. And what that really means is I worked, and I would help him with his work. And it wasn't always the stuff I wanted to do. In fact, the designs I didn't always like, even though he did really beautiful work like this. Um, I worked with Robert Sabuda um, for many years. And he does a lot of very white, beautiful structural pop-ups and stuff. We worked on things for like the MoMA and, and, all kind, and, um, and other publishers. I learned a lot from, from just learning how structurally, how this stuff. But it wasn't always the stuff that I wanted to do myself. But that's really important. In the beginning, when you're learning something, sometimes you got to do the work. And it isn't always exactly what you want to do. But it helps you learn. So after years of learning all these different principles and learning all this stuff, how to make pop-ups, I, I, I got to start doing my own books. Um, some of the, the first two books I did weren't, weren't like these. They were these really weird books, the pop-up book of phobias and the pop-up book of nightmares. They were these bizarre books. I never even thought they'd actually come out. Um, but, but actually, the phobia book was really popular, especially with, um, with therapists in the city. Then I was able to start making books that I really, really was excited about. Um, I had, uh, I, I, my first New York Times bestseller was a pop-up book of butterflies. And after that, we were able to create a series about prehistoric animals, because I love paleontology. The first was this dinosaur book and called Encyclopedia Prehistorica. And um, this has been translated now into about 25 different languages around the world. And doing this project, you know, it says I collaborate. On these books, I collaborated with Robert Sabuda. He would just sort of oversee things, but I would, I would do the writing, the artwork, and the, um, and the engineering. So all, all parts of making a pop-up book. We made three in this series. And when, you make a, when you're just starting out and you're making these big books, you learn a lot. Boy, you learn a lot, but you make a lot of mistakes. And each book, I look at it and I see a lot of mistakes. In fact, I can't always enjoy my books when they're finished because all I do is go, oh, you could have done that better. Oh, that wasn't that good. But a lot of other people don't know that. So, um, you know, I, 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 yes, I go to a therapist about this sort of stuff. <laughs> so I did this series and then let's see what else we got. I've done a lot of books about, you know, uh, classic stories and fa fairy tales like Cinderella and The Jungle Book, which is really awesome. I love that, that one. I did a series about uh, mythology. So I love learning about like, things like mythology and history and, and science. And, and um, I, like, I kind of have one of those minds where I'm obsessive. Surprise. Um, like I, I get obsessive about a subject. So when I want to learn something, I just don't want to learn a little. I got to learn a lot. And what happens, though, when you do that, especially when you're creating books like this, you have only so much space in this, in this uh, biological computer in your head. And so when I learn something else, it kind of pushes the old stuff out, and the new stuff goes in. So I learn stuff, and then you know, it pushes old stuff. So thank God I still know how to walk and talk, because you know, like I've learned so much about all these different subjects. So this is mythology, this series. The Gods and Hero book is actually pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to do. I did a book with Maurice Sendak at one point. Maurice Sendak did Where the Wild Things Are. This pop-up book was called Mommy. And it was about, it, it barely had any words in it, but it, it was about a baby who went into a mad scientist's lab. And of course, in, in Maurice's world, the uh, baby uh, defeats all the monsters in funny ways like pulling down their pants and doing fun stuff like that. Which, of course, I mean, it makes total sense. I also, like I said, really love Star Wars. Now, I'm an old school Star Wars fan. And so uh, I did the first book for the 30th anniversary of the original Star Wars trilogy. And that's awesome. This year is the 40th anniversary, so that book is 10 years old. Um, it was incredible. It was, a, it was a huge dream come true. It was a dream and it was a nightmare. You know, making it, I'm so obsessive that I had to get everything just right. That, I actually put myself in that book as a character. Um, so it was fun to be able to do that and put some of my friends. In fact, a lot of times, in some of, 
in my books, I do put family and friends, even pets um, that I used to have. In fact, in my Cinderella book, my pet rabbits from when I was a kid are following Cinderella throughout the book uh, because um, everyone wants to learn about Lucy, Bernadine, and Fuzzball, my pet rabbits from when I was, when I was young. I also did a second Star Wars book, and I'll probably do a third Star Wars book once we're finished with the new trilogy. I, I can't wait. Uh, I love comic books, uh, and especially DC Comics. I did two uh, superhero books so far, but there may be another big Marvel one coming in the future. I actually got to work with six different comic book artists for this book. It was awesome to be able to create it. It actually has a light up. Um, some of my books have light up parts. And I, what they call my, my type of uh, work, paper engineering, they call it low tech engineering because I'm only working with one type of material, paper. But sometimes I use other things like electronics. So in this book and in the Star Wars book, there are electronics. Like as a matter of fact, like at the end of the Star Wars book, there's Darth Vader. Now, and at, at the top, there are two working lights. Now, you can't tell with the lights in here, but that lightsaber that Luke has lights up, and then on the opposite side, the Darth Vader one does. So there's actually wires that go in underneath the page. I wish the lights weren't so bright, but you would be able to see that better. But anyways, it's been cool to be able to, to create things like that. And then this one has a bat signal that lights up. It's super cool. Um, yes, I'm a brony. I totally made a pony book. It was awesome. And I can't wait for the big movie. Um, what's cool about working with My Little Pony is I, in this book, I actually got to make myself a pony. Um, uh, my pony name is Professor Paper Scraps. And um, you, I dare you to find me in this, in this book. I'm somewhere in one of the backgrounds. So it was really cool. I love the, I, my sister loved My Little Pony when we were young, but the new pony show is awesome. And I was forced to watch all of them. Uh, and it was great. It was great. I love it. It was, it's really fun. I did, sometimes I try to do books where they aren't just a book, there's something else. This book was for the Game of Thrones, and it not only becomes, it's not only a pop-up book about all the different places in the Game of Thrones, in Westeros and everything, it also becomes a giant map. It's about as big as a table. So you can enjoy it both ways. Um, some people say, like, it's important to think outside the box. I like to say it's important to think outside the book. And um, so there are a lot more projects that are coming up that, we're trying to stretch the boundaries of what a pop-up book can be or just what a book can be and how it can be interactive. Um, I also like to express my feminine side. And I, uh, it, I am big into princesses, OK? So, um, and I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, all right? So I've done um, two Disney princess books. One um, was, of course, Frozen. Because let me tell you, when Disney calls you up and they say, would you like to do a fro? You don't even let them finish the word. You say, yes, yes, I will. Um, I worked on the Frozen book. And let me tell you, I didn't stop singing that song. I would hear it in my sleep. And I let it go. You know, I would hear it all the time. But it was, it was great. It was really fun to work on. And I also worked on a Disney princess book because I love uh, classic animation. Um, and so many of those Disney princess movies, especially things like Cinderella. And uh, well, I was, I'm, my personal favorite is Little Mermaid. Um, those, those movies like really transformed the artists that I am today. So they were really uh, big influences. And so to be able to work on that and to make like Cinderella super cool, that Cinderella actually, she transforms. So she's like, oh, I'm all sad, Cinderella. And then you pull the bottom of her skirt thing. Um, you don't pull her skirt, but there's a little tab on the bottom. And it transforms into like super fab uh, Cinderella. So it was really cool. That was a hard pop to design. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, of course, in one of my most recent books, something I know that everyone here at Google loves, Lego. So a couple years ago, the Lego folks came to me and they said, would you want to do a Lego book? And I didn't even let them finish that sentence either. Um, yes, totally. I grew up building with Lego. Uh, but back when I was young, we didn't have all the cool sets that you guys have now. We just had like whatever, six colors. And I think we had wheels, maybe. Um, but it was, it, we never, when you would make something, it never looked like one object. It always just kind of looked like, you know, a bunch of different bricks stuck together. Whereas now you have so many different pieces. It's, I actually, when I was re researching this book, I tried to get the Lego people to tell me a number of all the different pieces that they've ever made. You know, not color, 
but the, the types of pieces, and they couldn't even give it to me. There's so many different pieces. They don't even have a number for that. So when I worked on this book, I actually uh, went to the Lego headquarters in Beeland in Denmark. I went to their special like design headquarters, which is this big white, like sort of big, I think they call it the white box or something. And I can't tell you what was in there, but it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. And um, it's really like, there's such artists that work there. It's incredible how they figure out how to make these beautiful things with these little plastic bricks. It's, 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 it's incredible. So working on this book, my research was really tough. I mean, they had to like, they sent me like 200 different Lego sets and I, you know, built Legos. It was really hard. Yeah, actually, I got a couple of interns to help me um, because it takes a while. I mean, I know some of the parents here know, like when you get those, you know, you get those sets, like it takes a while, especially when they're those big ones. So we built everything and then we made, the, uh, then, you know, made the pops and then made the artwork. Here's a little sample of what's inside. The Lego pop-up. And I did the writing, the pop-ups and the art in this. Um, yeah, and there are, there are cool pops in this that transform. This one transforms into three different things. And then there's tons of minifigures and all kinds of cool things. That's my, that's my assistant there. Works in Ninjago, too. Um, and it has this huge pop in it that is super tall. It's this big, tall tower of pops. Actually, we're going to have a giveaway of some books later on. So think in your mind about like some, some cool Lego facts. Just think in your head, and we'll get back to that later on. So enough already. See, I, notes. You know, um, Tom, OK, so this is how I do what I do. All right, when I work <laughs> in my office down in the West Village, um, all I do is I stick paper in a machine, and pop-up books come out. That's how I do it. All right, I'm ready. I'll see you later. No, actually, that's not what I do. Um, don't you love my angry face in that picture, too? It's like, urgh. Um, that's not how it's done. It's actually a really long process. Making a pop-up book sometimes takes from like four to six months and uh, to, to make a whole book from the beginning to the end. And then most of that work has to be done about eight months before it's actually on the shelves because after I make one book, there has to be a whole group of people that help me make thousands more. So here's how it's done. First, you know, of course, uh, I have to get ideas for things. I have to get inspiration. I look all around me. I look at the world everywhere and try to take inspiration from anything I can see. Or, you know, you're lucky that you guys are in New York. There's so much here. And I think most of the pictures that, that are here I took in New York. Um, there's, so much, there's so much to see. Uh, and, but I think that you can be anywhere and be inspired by things. So I take inspiration from from everywhere, and, and um, sometimes you can see the way that something's built, and that might inspire you to make something really cool in a pop-up book. So the tools I use making pop-ups, of course, after I've written the story. Okay, paper. Yeah, I use a lot of cardstock. I, I usually work in white cardstock. This is it right here. You can get it. It's a little heavier than regular paper. You can get it like at office stores and everything. And the reason why I use it in white is uh, first I want to figure out what the structure is, and then I worry about coloring it or drawing on it or whatever. So usually in the beginning, I just work in white paper. Um, I, of course, use uh, tape. I use different kinds of tape. I use si lots of scissors. Um, glue, of course, glue. And X-Acto knife. The X-Acto knife I use to make really intricate cuts. And I need lots of Band-Aids, because I don't just make cuts on the paper. I, uh, Yes, I like Hello Kitty. OK. Let's see. So in the beginning, this is kind of what a rough pop-up looks like. I may have an idea for what is going to happen on that pop-up page. Just words. I will never like draw a picture of what I'm going to make. I usually uh, I just have a word of what might happen. So I just thought to myself, I wanted to have a pop-up that uh, the dinosaur bit the reader. I thought that'd be really fun. Because if you were going to experience a T-Rex, like that would be the coolest way to, ex well, I mean, now, you wouldn't really want to be eaten, but it would be cool if they kind of came at you. So this is the first version, and I'll take it apart very carefully, trace the pieces in the computer using Adobe Illustrator, and I'll use, make what are called die lines. And these die lines are going to be used later on for when they manufacture this thousands of times over. So I will remake the pop-up sometimes up to 10 times, or even 20 times, um, to make sure that it works just right. And you can see there's even notes on that and everything. And that's what it looks like in the final. 
Now, one of the things that um, now I also make the artwork as well, and I'll show you how I do that. Is uh, also the, I do a style of artwork called cut paper collage. So I'm cutting up paper to make the pops. I thought it'd be cool to also cut up paper to make the artwork as well. Oh, in the beginning, this is what a pop-up looks like. This is just this get the movement right. Now, I actually went and studied a horse and how it moved. And this was going to be a book. This book never actually came out. Oh, well. Anyways, um, wah, wah, too bad for you. Uh, it wasn't that exciting. I swear. I swear it's not. So this is um, an early prototype that actually has sketches on it. This is, this is something that's called um, a white dummy. And it, it goes to the my editor. Now, the editor works at a publisher, and she kind of corrects all my work. She kind of, it's, imagine, it's like your teacher, and she actually goes through and marks things that are, that are written wrong, or she may even mark some of the pops and say, I don't think that this is a good thing that you should do. You should do something else. So she'll, um, and just like a teacher, she marks it in red, you know. So it's great when you get that back. But usually I don't get, I, I do okay with my editors, and usually they're, they're on the same, um, they, they're on the same page so to speak, uh, uh, I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry, um, as me when we're making pop-ups. And this is just, you know, show you some of the details that go, in, go into making it. This is an early version of the Darth Vader pop. This was a really tough pop-up to make because um, there's two portions of Darth Vader's helmet. There's a, well, there's actually, there's, a, there's three. There's, I don't want to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. But there's, anyways, the, what, what um, happens with this is actually, you can, I wanted the reader to be able to see Anakin for a couple seconds before the mask closed up over him when the pop-up opened. So you can actually, if you look as it's opening, it's really important, like the time, you can see him for a second, and then it closes up over his face. So, cause, because everyone makes, everyone notices those little things. So it, this took me a long time to be able, and I had to actually engineer the front part of his face separately than the back and then put them together. So it took a lot of time. A lot of time and a lot of prototypes to get it to even look like this. So you see I've kind of sculpted it in white first. And then there's sketches around it. And then, and then, and then. Oh, that's the wrong thing. And then, then that's the final color version. When I was doing this book, I actually, which was awesome, I got, you know, I do get some perks when I work with some of these uh, different uh, companies and things. I got to go to the Star Wars archives. So this was the Lucasfilm archives in uh, Marin County. This was actually at the Skywalker Ranch. They don't even let people go here anymore. So I, I got in there at the right time. Um, and they had all the masks from the old movies. Those are actual stunt lightsabers. That's my, my editor and I that we're getting ready to fight about something. And those are stunt lightsabers from, M and the, the matte painting in the back is actually used from The Empire Strikes Back. Um, so I am like, I couldn't stop smiling after. This was so much fun to go see. And, you know, did I need to go? I remember when my editor says, oh, do you think you're going to need to go to the Lucas Archives to look at things? Now, I, now, let me, at the time, I owned hundreds of Star Wars books. I had every movie, you know, I have tons. I knew everything about it. Of course, I was like, yes, I think I, think I should probably go. So I was able to go. It was, it was an awesome experience. And I've had a lot of nice experiences like that. Like the big fan in me gets to go do these cool things. This is me working in my studio, not this fast. I, this is, yeah, this is me working in a studio probably over a few hours, and I'm designing a pop-up. And you, as you can see, it's just by hand. There's no computer program. The computer program comes in when I actually take the pop apart and trace it. Now, after I've made all those die lines, all those lines that are tracings of the pieces, I may go in and make artwork. Sometimes it's in the computer, sometimes it's by hand. And I put the artwork and those die lines together rebuild the pop-up again and again to make sure it works. And that is how a pop-up was made. This was for the Transformers pop-up book. Like I said, I love Transformers. That, um, that was just a, a quick uh, pop-up how to make um, for that book. That was an incredible book to do as well. I have a lot of dream projects that come true. People always ask me, you must not have any more dreams left. I'm like, let me tell you, I got lots. There's always something else that I want to do. I have a lot of dreams. Um, this is just a prototype of what the book looked like before it was in color. And um, sometimes I do the artwork and sometimes other people do the artwork. Like I said, I worked with Mari Sendak once. Um, and, then, and then for this book, I actually worked with um, a great transformer artist named Emiliano, Emiliano Santa Lucia. He lives in Italy. I actually never got to see him the whole time. We worked over, you know, we just sent things back and forth to each other over the internet. And, um, I would draw the initial sort of sketch and what he should draw and made all kinds of notes about what, where, and where, what it should look like. 
and then he would make the art, and then I would put that with those die line pieces. So you can see, like sometimes for one pop-up, there might be like 30 different pieces that work in tandem, all these different levers and, and different me mechanics working together. Or there may be other times when I make the artwork myself. Now I think about making a pop-up. Um, okay, so there's three different stages in making pop-up. You have to have the, you have the writing done, you know, and the res whatever research and writing. Um, that's like a cake, you know, when you're making a cake, that's the recipe. All right, you gotta have that. The next step is the actual cake. You know, you're actually gonna bake something. So um, the next step is actually making the cake. And then the artwork is the frosting to me. I love frosting. Um, so making color artwork. Now I said I use, a st I make a style called uh, cut paper collage and I actually by hand uh, make all these different types of art. Sometimes it's digital, but usually it's by hand. I, I take all these papers that I've made in my studio, all these different textures. I have a huge rack of different new papers that, that we're constantly using. And I will, uh, I will show you a little bit how it's done. First, I'll draw a picture. Um, just very quickly, uh, usually tighten up a sketch. And then I'll use that sketch as my, as my um, sort of map. And I'll cut out sections of different colored paper with my X-Acto knife. I'll lay it into place using my sketch sort of as a guide. And I print it on a clear piece of uh, plastic. Um, then I'll glue in the different pieces of colored paper. And the glue I use is very similar to Elmer's glue, white glue. And then that's what the final thing will look like. And it's a very small piece of artwork, um, but it may have 20 different little pieces of paper all glued together make one. Sometimes some of my larger pieces um, may have uh, you know, hundreds of pieces of paper glued together. When I make the artwork for the pop-up pieces, it's a little different. I have to make the artwork like all splatted out and like it almost looks like a it's, it's like pop-up roadkill you know like they're, they're all flat there's pieces here and there um, and and after so many years I figured out where each piece needs to be and what needs to be on what piece because sometimes the head isn't necessarily connected to the body so um, I figured it out after a long time but you know there the one thing I don't really say to you guys uh, didn't say it earlier was there are a lot of mistakes along the way. I don't just start out and have the perfect idea first and it all looks great. For every wow pop-up that you see, there's a lot of not so wows that get thrown out. And that's the way I figure things out. You know, I, I sort of, I will make something and see if it's something I like. If it's not, then I try something different. And that's, you know, hopefully you guys can get from this. It doesn't come out perfect and it's okay because we're supposed to learn from our mistakes. Um, I've made so many of them you wouldn't even know. And it's OK to do that, because that's how we get better. Well, so, OK, so I've made a, one pop-up. I've made all the art. I've made all the pops. And I've made all the words. Now, what do I do? So I send all that, and I send one pop-up book that I made by hand to a manufacturer. And the manuf they're actually pop-up books are hand manufactured. Once I make one pop-up book, um, I, uh, the next step is sending all that information to a, 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 a printer and a hand assembly a manufacturer. And um, uh, so that's all sent. Usually the work is done overseas. Um, and I've worked with a lot of these manufacturers for years, so they understand how to put together pop-ups. In fact, they're more of experts than assembling pop-ups than, than I could ever be. And they tell me things, this doesn't work, this will work. Here's some ideas about things. So what they'll do is they'll break down the book and into different groups. And one group will make just one page of a book. And um, so each person, they'll, they'll remake, each person will make one section of, so for example, if this ad at here, one person will assemble this leg and hand it off to the next person. And there will be a large group that just works on this page. And they'll make thousands. Sometimes they can make up to like 15,000 a week. Um, they're really hand, they're really incredibly skilled hand laborers. And they, they oftentimes come up with ideas that are way better than what I come up with. So I work the entire time during that production, which is usually, like I said, about eight months before a book hits the shelves. So they'll send me prototypes. And then once they actually start building the books, they can you know, make up to 15,000 um, a week. They'll package them up. Um, after they made each spread, they'll, they'll glue them together. Then they'll glue a cover on it. They'll um, clamp them, let them dry, and then they will get shipped off in boxes all over the world. So it kind of goes from my hands creating the original book to the manufacturer's hands to your hands in the, in, um, in the bookstores. So it's really, it's really too cool. But there are a lot of products that we don't realize are made by hand 
when they are. Um, there isn't like some giant machine that will do all this work for us. You know, there's some really intricate things that we, um, that we have and that we buy, and there are hands that go into it. So now I'm going to show you, now that I've talked about myself enough, uh, we're going to make a pop right here. And I'm going to show you some basics. And, um, but, I, but I'm going to need an idea for what I should make. Now, last time, someone came up with a really crazy idea. And um, oh, I did it, of course. But uh, it was something. It was pretty funny. So uh, anyone got an idea? You want to raise your hand? And I'll pick, let's see, uh, let's see. OK, you. Yes. Plants? OK, that works. Well, I like this green, so I'm going to use that for the actual plants, I think. So what I'm going to start with is just this cardstock. I'm going to fold it in half. Oh, I've already got an idea. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. So OK, we're going to start off. This is, uh, we took a piece of paper, and we're going to fold it in half just like that. All right? And um, just. For the sake of being able to see it on video, I'm going to make a line down the center so it's a little easier to see. So you see that center line? We're going to, when we make some of our pieces, we're going to align it. We're going to line up the folds on things. Because that's a lot of what pop up people do. They like line up different folds to make sure things work right. So one of the things I'm going to make is something called a V fold. And the V fold is actually, well, it's shaped like a V. And most of the pop ups. In, in most of my books, use some form of V-fold. Um, that's not a good one. OK, see this, see this big dinosaur? See, see this, this piece underneath his body here? That, and it's sort of like triangular in V. So that's a V. And you can see that it moves. It actually is forcing all these pieces to move up. So a V-fold moves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two V-folds. And I'm going to make two V-folds that, that are they're both right angles. Right angles are 90 degree angles, right? Um, correct, I mean, correct. Uh, so let's see here. I'm going to take a piece of, I'm going to take a different piece. I'm going to take gray so that you can see these pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, first I'm going to make a square, a small square out of paper. And then I'm going to make two triangles from that square. And you say, Matthew, how can that be done? I just don't know. Well, OK, so right, I just folded a rectangle, right? And now, correct, I mean? Because if I say right angle, it's, it's very confusing. So then I'm going to fold this triangle down like this. And I'll be able to see if I cut it along the edge like that. And like that, then we have a square. Because this side, this side, this side, and this side. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. And we need two triangles that are e Oh, if I cut this down the middle, I get two triangles that are equal, right? We're learning geometry, too, today. Good thing you're not in school. <laughs> you know, it's funny. People say all the time, you must have been really good at geometry. And I don't remember. I don't think I was. I think I no, I wasn't. I was not a great math student. Um, I did OK, but calculus, oh man, did that kill me. Um, so there, we have two triangles. And what we're going to do is fold them in half, and we're going to make two V folds. There's one, and the fold where the V is is going to be down here. And here's the second one. And we're going to tape these onto our base. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a line on that fold just so we know, so you can see it better. Because last time, we couldn't see it as well. My shirt's really open. Isn't it? Yikes. I'm really giving you a lot of cleavage today. All right. So here are our V-folds. And we're going to have them actually, when we glue them onto, this, onto the page, we're going to have them Point the points touching, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that that center line on the top V is lined up with the, the main base page one, and we're gonna do the same 
on the bottom, just like that. It kind of looks like an hourglass a little bit, right? And I'll, I'm going to use some white tape, if I have it, yes. So I use this tape that's very similar to masking tape um, in my studio. It's art, artist tape. And we're going we're gonna to tape along the V, because it's a V fold. And there is one lined up just like that. And I always make sure that I push, I make sure that the tape is really secure on there. So now we can see when it moves. See? There's one V. Right. Now we want another V, but it's going to go the other way. Actually, I'm going to move it more towards the middle. That's the other thing. You can't be afraid, don't be afraid when you're making these pop ups. Don't be afraid to pick up the pieces and move them around if you don't like the way they are. You can always change, you can always make, you know, remake and, and fix your mistakes. Um, just by the way, I also uh, have a, f uh, I'm supposed to remember like all my social media stuff. So, because um, I'm not real good at it. So, I have a, a YouTube page where you can make your own pops. Um, uh, if you look up Matthew Reinhardt, it's called uh, um, Let's Make It Pop. And I have different crafts. I'm trying to do them every week. So, if I miss a week, please don't get mad at me. Um, but uh, there's always different things. In fact, tomorrow is National Superhero Day. So, wear your cape. Okay. Um, anyways, tomorrow's National Superhero Day. And there's a pop up superhero card that we made for, uh, and I think it went up today. So, you can make your own um, superhero card. So, there's one V, and I'm going to attach the second V. I know, a plant. I'm making a plant. Um, I'm going to attach this. And then what we're going to do, once we have these two Vs working in opposite directions, then we're going to make something. It's a, it's a mechanism. Here, I'm going to show you. There are the two. All right? And they look, they're going in different directions. One's going up, one's going down. What's cool about this is one side like this lower triangle here, if we attach something to the edge here, on the opposite side, on the top, on that same edge, so on opposite side, so let's see, I'm looking at myself on the, there and there. So if we make a bridge going across, if we make a bridge going, I was trying to watch myself in this thing, and I was like, wait, what's going on? Um, if we make a bridge going across, we'll, we'll actually, we'll be able to connect the two and we'll make a pop-up that kind of expands and twists. So it's really cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of make a little bit thinner, longer sort of bridge piece. And I'm going to mark with another color the, the edges that we're going to connect. Can you guys see that? There to there. And then I'm going to see, did I make, I didn't make that long enough. If you saw my studio, it is a wreck. I mean, there's, there's paper everywhere. Sometimes I'll come out of my office after a long day, and I'll just have paper all over. I won't even realize it. And, you know, you know people like, you know, get home, and, and, you know, it's like there's something on your shirt, and it's like this huge, you know, piece of paper or half of a pop-up. It's like, nobody told me this on the way out? Okay, so it's going to go across. The only thing that is not going to work is we need to snip off this little bit and this little bit. So I'm just going to use my marker and roughly get a line. So there you can see where I'm supposed to cut it. I'm going to snip and snip. Use my tape and we're going to attach this. And what's cool it, with this is we're going to do a part where it makes this kind of, OK, so now we are going to attach it from under here. We'll have the tape go up. Like I said, this pop-up is called a twister <laughs> because it twists. Oh, that's cool. The reminder, Matthew, please shut up soon. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so now it's attached from here all the way across. There's a bridge. And when we close it, see how it's sort of bowing? Oop, we don't want that. I mean, come on, man. Um, 
just got to make sure it's attached right. And, and that you have your tape on there pretty hard. All right, so we're going to fold it. It's going to sort of arc like that. And what's going to happen is you're going to fold it, and it will, will, you're going to find, find the fold. So you're going to kind of press down on your pop and smash it a little. So now, now uh, I'm a very sensitive artist, OK? So when I open this, I need like positive reinforcement. So I need you to say like, ooh, like be really surprised and excited when you see it. Okay, let me make sure. Okay, all right. Ooh, oh, thank God, thank God. Wow, that's really exciting. Wow, all right. But this is the start of what we can start building on top of this. So let's see. Hmm, what can we? So you're gonna make a plant, right? So first, we need some leaves, right? And every surface that's here, it has potential to become a part of the pop-up. So I'm going to use double stick tape. Now, usually I use glue, but because you know I don't have a lot of time, there we go. So there's a leaf and another leaf. So you guys having fun today? Yeah. You learning a lot about, about what your moms and dads and everyone else, all your parents do? Is it boring? No. no? OK, good. I didn't think it would be boring here. Every time I pass by here, so I live in New York. I live actually in Chelsea, um, a few blocks from here. Every time I pass by go the Google building, I always think to myself, God, I want a job there. Because um, everyone looks like they're so like having fun and smart, and you know, here I am on my bike, and I'm you know covered with paper and sad and pathetic. So, um, so there's the start of my plant. Maybe I'll put some leaves here. But you, wh whatever you're doing here is, seems exciting, and so it's cool to be able to get an idea of what people do. Okay, I'm starting to get more here. It's still. And I'm just adding pieces of paper. Let's see. And it doesn't look as pretty in the beginning. Sometimes it's just getting those shapes right. And here, let's see. OK. Well, they're getting a little better. I mean, they wouldn't be hiring me for the, uh, go the Google Doodles anytime soon on that one. Um, let's see. We also maybe, you know, most plants kind of need a little pot to go in. so. We'll cut a little shape down here. Oh, by the way, should we do that now while I finish this up? Um, we are going to give away, how many books do we have? Four? Um, we have four books to give away. Um, now, I'm sorry we don't have a lot more, um, but that's all we had to give away for today. Um, you can find my books anywhere, like any bookstore. You can find it online, Amazon, all those places. Um, uh, even places like Toys R Us and things like that. So you know, like they're all everywhere. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I have a YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, there's a um, Matthew Papa Books by Matthew Reinhardt. Um, so I'm all over the place, and um, we're gonna do a quick. We're gonna have people. If you have a Lego fact, I want you to raise your hand, and Lauren will pick. Now you have to tell us what your fact is, and then you get a book. Um, so Lauren, why don't you start going ahead, and I'll finish up my pop-up while you start doing that. And you have to speak up so we can hear you. That's part of it. You have to end. You can't make it up. All right, shh. Eighty-three. That's right. Get the man a book. Congratulations. And I will sign your book at the end um, after we're finished, if you'd like. Oh, the fact was it's been around how many years? 80, 83 years. What? OK. Go for it. Oh, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds good. Awesome. Congratulations. Oh, that's right. And it's actually in my Lego pop. You get to see that, the evolution of minifigures. How many, now, do you guys have lots of Lego minifigures? 
It's kind of insane how many there are now. Okay, I'm still working on this. What she? What? Really? I mean, yes. I mean, yes. I thought you said something about quarters. I was like, what? Headquarters? Yes, of course. I was there. Totally. I'm sorry. I'm out of it, you guys. All right. So awesome. Congratulations, everybody who won the book. And like I said, I will. I will definitely. So wait, I'm not quite done. Um, so she says she wanted to plant, but you know, like plants aren't always the most active, you know, things. Of course, the first thing she said, or for the first, when she first said it, I thought, well, I'll make a plant, but I'm gonna make um, this plant into a Venus flytrap because, let's see, I've lost some of my, let's see, if I put the neck up here. Oh yeah, totally, totally. I had a friend who was in one of those musicals, and he wasn't so good. He, it, was a, it was a community theater, and I had to go see him sing it. He was Seymour. He wasn't so good at it. Um, so let's see if that works. Is that going to work? It's going to. Now, like, like I said, sometimes we don't get everything right, so you got to keep trying. Here we go. And I lost a leaf in there. It's hard to do it on the fly. Let's see if that works. There we go. Now it sticks out. I cheated a little bit. But there we go. Oh, we lost the leaf. It's not bad. I, I, I could use a little bit more work. If I had more time, I'd be able to make something cooler. But anyways, thank you so much for having me today. You guys were awesome. And um, if you ever want to make any pop-ups, go online. And uh, have a good day today. Bye, y'all.